Greetings, mother factors. Mi nombre es Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the warm and sticky land of Spain. Yes, today's topic is every cockney gangster's favourite place to lay low while the heat dies down. And a place that I've never been to because I can't handle the heat because I am a human ice cube. But why was the flu pandemic of 1918 called Spanish Flu? Which Spanish city is a monument to the human liver? Let us know what you think in the poll up above. And does the rain in Spain really stay mainly on the plane? I just have to know. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so grab a jug of sangria, suppress the regional independence movement, and prepare yourself for some truly horrific Spanish pronunciations as we count through 101 facts about Spain. Oh, sorry, no, about Spain. I told you. Number one. Spain, officially known as the Kingdom of Spain, is a country mostly located in the Iberian Peninsula in the uber-cool continent of Europe. The Spanish word for Spain is España, which means Spain, believe it or not. Number two. The original meaning of the word Spain is highly contested, with many theories offering up various, wildly differing interpretations. Some of the most common proposals for the etymological origins of Spain suggest the name might mean city of the western world, the land where metals are forged, or even the land of rabbits. I think it's the last one. I hope it's the last one. Number 3. Spain covers around 85% of the Iberian Peninsula, a large bulbous landmass that extends out into the Atlantic Ocean, closing off the Mediterranean Sea. Spain shares the Iberian Peninsula with the tiny microstate of Andorra, as well as the British Overseas Territory of Gibraltar, a small southern slither of France, and Portugal, the land of Cristiano Ronaldo and Nando's. Number 4. As such, continental Spain is bordered to the south and east by the Mediterranean Sea, and has a small land boundary with the British Overseas Territory Gibraltar, and to the north and northeast by France, Andorra, and the Bay of Biscay. To the west, though, is the Atlantic Ocean and the aforementioned Peri Peri Portugal. Number 5. Spain is divided into 17 territories, 15 of which are part of continental Spain. Where are the other two, Sam? Haha, <laughs> well, I'll tell you. The other two were constituted by two large archipelagos, the Canary Islands off the African Atlantic coast and the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean Sea. In addition, Spain owns two autonomous cities on continental Africa called Ceuta and Melilla, as well as several small islands in the Alboran Sea, close to the African coast, known as the Plazas de Saboranya, meaning cities of sovereignty. Number 6. As a result of its tiny non-mainland territory, Spain is the only European country to have a border with an African country, which is Morocco. Number 7. With an area of roughly 506,000 square kilometres, Spain is the largest country in Southern Europe, the second largest country in Western Europe and the European Union, and is the fourth largest country in the European continent. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Number 8. The first modern humans arrived on the land that is now known as Spain roughly 35,000 years ago, though early human ancestors have inhabited the Iberian Peninsula for far longer. Clearly that glorious Spanish sun has been attracting hominids for eons. Number 9. Later, Iberian cultures, as well as ancient Phoenician, Greek and Carthaginian settlements began to emerge on the peninsula, before the region was brought under Roman rule in approximately 200 BC. Those pesky Romans, with their pesky straight roads and art made out of small coloured tiles, makes me sick. Number 10. Eventually, however, the western part of the Roman Empire kind of, well, collapsed, after which the region was invaded by various Germanic tribal confederations from Central Europe, such as the Swaby, Vandals, and Alans. Yep, an entire tribe of people called Alan. At least that's what I assume that means. Number 11! <laughs> Eventually, the Visigoths, a super special variety of Goth, forcibly integrated all the existing independent territories in the peninsula, leaving only small areas ungothified. There were black candles and fake plastic bats everywhere. Number 12. However, in the late 8th century, the Visigothic Kingdom fell to the Moors, a loosely defined group of Muslim invaders who would end up ruling most of the peninsula for the next seven centuries. Very Moorish, the Moors. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll see myself out. Number 13. Eventually, however, the Europeans gradually clawed back their territory that had been taken from them all those centuries ago, in a process known as the Reconquista. With the marriage of Isabella of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon, which happened in the late 15th century, it was great times, you should have been there, Spain emerged as a unified Catholic country. Number 14. In the same year in 1492, the last Moorish kingdom of Iberia finally surrendered to the Catholic crown, and a certain Italian fellow named Christopher Columbus, under the sponsorship of Ferdinand and Isabella, discovered America. Supposedly. This resulted in a glorious age of peaceful cooperation with the native people of the Americas in which absolutely nobody was almost entirely wiped out. Oh wait, nope, hang on, I've got that wrong. That's exactly what happened. Number 15. Interestingly, there is a direct descendant of Christopher Columbus who is actually alive today. 
He's a Spanish nobleman called, and I'm sorry in advance here, Cristobal Colón de Gabajal y Garosabel, 18th Duke of Baragua, but his friends just call him the first bit for short. Number 16. The 16th and 17th centuries would turn out to be the golden age for Spain, as it developed into Europe's leading power. Its status was reinforced by trade and wealth from its colonial possessions, which sounds fairly innocuous if you don't mention the millions of non-European people who were killed or enslaved. Don't do colonialism, kids. Number 17. Spain's colonial legacy meant that there are currently 21 independent countries that were once under Spanish rule. Obviously, that's nothing compared to us British. Number 18. Of course, you're not a real country until you've had a good old-fashioned civil war. Clearly not wanting to be left out, Spain had its very own Guerrera Civil between 1936 and 1939, known simply as the Spanish Civil War, the boring title, in which left-wing Republicans of the Second Spanish Republic fought against the Catholic Nationalists. Yeah, I know, it's not exactly Bruno Tyson. The Nationalists won, leading to the ascension of the fascist dictator Francisco Franco, who ruled until his death in 1975. Number 19. Though the weapons known as Molotov cocktails have a distinctly Slavic name, improvised incendiary devices of this type were first used in the Spanish Civil War, before becoming famous for their use in other conflicts. Number 20. During the era of Francoist Spain, the Catholic Church abducted as many 300,000 newborn babies from known Republicans, and then literally sold them to Catholic families. Catholic officials would often whisk the child away straight after birth for routine testing, after which the parents would be told their child had died. Wow, good one, Catholic Church. Nice job. Number 21. Interestingly, Spain was technically neutral throughout the First and Second World Wars. However, Spain's leaders were ideologically aligned with Germany and Italy, who were the baddies in this case. Bad Spain. Make better choices. Number 22. To be fair though, some Spanish people listened to me, except from the past, and did make better choices. During World War II, a Spaniard by the name of Juan Pujo Garcia became a double agent against the Nazis by faking pro-fascist fanaticism. He soon attracted the attention of the Germans, who sent him to England to recruit more agents, which Pujol did immediately, with the only catch being that those he recruited were entirely fictional, just like his numerous intelligence reports. The Allies eventually accepted him as a useful asset, and his devious Spanish ways played a significant role in the downfall of the Axis powers. Number 23. As a result of his work as a super cool Nazi confusing literal double agent, Pujol had the rare distinction of receiving military decoration from both sides of the conflict. An Iron Cross from the Germans and an MBE from the British. <laughs> Stupid Nazis. Number 24. When Franco died in 1975 following four decades of dictatorship, the monarchy was restored and Juan Carlos became the King of Spain. Juan Carlos reigned as Spain's head of state for 39 years until he abdicated in 2014 to make way for the younger generation. His place as the Spanish sovereign was later taken by his son Felipe, now King Felipe VI. Number 25. As such, Spain is, barring any nasty revolutions between me recording this video and the video going live, a secular parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy, similar to us in the UK. Although technically, we're not secular. Number 26. The longest river located entirely within Spain is the Ebro River, which stretches across northern Spain for roughly 930 kilometers. However, Spain is also home to most of the Tagus River, which starts in central Spain and flows through Portugal and empties into the Atlantic Ocean. At 1,007 kilometers long, the Tagus is the longest river in the Iberian Peninsula. Number 27. The highest point in Spain is Mount Teide, a volcano on Tenerife in the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. It stands at 3,718 meters and is the highest point above sea level of any island in the Atlantic Ocean. Number 28. The highest point in continental Spain, though, is Mulasen, which is also the highest point in the entirety of the Iberian Peninsula. It stands at 3,482 meters and is part of the Sierra Nevada, a mountain range in southern Spain. Number 29. The language most commonly spoken in Spain is, unsurprisingly, Spanish. Spanish originates from the Castilla region and is therefore known as the Castilian, or Castellano. At least 70% of Spanish words are derived from Latin, with the rest coming from Arabic, Native American, Germanic, and Celtic languages. Number 30. Arabic's influence on the Spanish language, owing to the region's centuries-long rule under the Moors, can be seen in the numerous place names in Spain with the Al at the beginning, such as Al Maria, Al Barathin, and Alicante, with Al being the Arabic for the word the. Number 31. Oh. The Spanish language is known for the usage of inverted exclamation and question marks. This feature only exists in Spanish and languages that have cultural connections to Spanish, such as Galician, Catalan, and the Waray language of the Philippines. Spanish also pronounces the letter J as a throaty H. That would mean my future wife is called Jennifer Lawrence. Number 32. Spain's colonial empire left behind an enormous cultural and linguistic legacy that includes over 500 million speakers of Spanish, known as Hispanophones. 
This makes Spanish the world's second most spoken native language, behind only Mandarin Chinese. Number 33. The use of Spanish on the internet has increased by 1,312.4% between the year 2000 and 2015. Get online, Hispanophones, it's great stuff. Number 34. However, not all Spaniards are native speakers of Spanish, as there are actually four official languages in the country. These are Spanish, Catalan, Galician, and Basque. Still, Spanish is the native language of roughly 72% of the Spanish people. Number 35. The language of the Basque region is known as Basque in English, Basgo in Spanish, and Euskara in Basque, and is interesting for being a language isolate, meaning it's a natural language not known to be related to any other. It's a renegade badass language that plays by its own rules and don't need no man. Number 36. Spain has a population of just under 47 million people, making it the sixth most populous nation in Europe, with more than three quarters of Spanish people living in urban areas. Number, Number 37. Oh, uh, Spain is also the least densely populated country in Europe, with an average of just over 200 inhabitants for every square mile. However, in terms of areas in which people actually live, the people of Spain are actually quite densely packed. Number 38. Traditionally, Spaniards all have two surnames. The first surname is their father's first surname, and the second is their mother's first surname. That makes sense. This is, of course, deeply sexist, which is something we English speakers can say because forcing women to take their husband's surname isn't sexist at all. Number 39. Despite the fact that roughly 70% of Spanish people identify as Catholic, just over 13% of them actually go to church on Sundays. That is, according to a 2012 study by the Centre of Sociological Studies in Spain. Number 40. Owing to its rich history, fascinating culture, and generally fantastic weather, Spain was the third most visited country in the world in 2013, behind only France and the United States in second. According to some sources, Spain actually overtook America and took the second place spot in 2017. Hmm, I wonder what could have caused America to drop in the rankings in 2017. Number 41. Spain boasts an impressive 44 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, putting it in third place globally behind Italy with 49 and China with 45. Spain's sites include prehistoric rock art, historic cities, buildings, and even bridges. Yes, bridges. Ah, huh. oh, you can't make this stuff up. The meaning of life. The Spanish also had a massive influence on the world of modern art, starting all the way back in the 1800s. Artists like Antoni Gaudi, Pablo Picasso, Joan Moreau, and Salvador Dali cemented Spain's place in the history of art for their contributions to Art Nouveau, Cubism, and Surrealism. Number 43. You can also thank Spain for its contribution to literature, having produced one of the very first modern novels with the publication of Don Quixote, written in 1605 by Miguel de Cervantes. The book follows the story of a nobleman who was so obsessed with reading romantic tales he literally goes mad and decides to set out on his own nightly adventure. Number 44. By far the most popular sport in Spain is football, or soccer. The Spanish prefer to call the sport football, which is a rough Spanish pronunciation of the English name. Spain is one of only eight countries to have won the FIFA World Cup, which it did at the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. This was also the first time the team had even reached the final. Number 45. The national animal of Spain is the bull, which is slightly strange given how some Spaniards enjoy torturing and killing them as part of the cultural tradition of bullfighting. But hey, whatever yanks your cranks, Spain. Number 46. One of Spain's most famous festivals is that of La Tamatina, in which people congregate in the Valencian town of Buñol. Why, I hear you ask? Well, to throw tomatoes at each other for sheer fun. More than 150,000 tomatoes are usually thrown at La Tamatina in an hour-long all-out food fight that leaves participants covered in tomato blood. Number 47. One amazing side effect of La Tomatina is that after the tomato brawl is over, the village cobbled streets are left pristine, owing to the citric acid of the tomatoes which disinfect and clean everything they touch. Number 48. Another famous, or perhaps infamous, Spanish custom is the running of the Bulls Festival held every year in the northern Spanish city of Pamplona. More than a million people attended each year to see people attempt to outrun the stampeding bulls without being trampled or gored to death. What fun! Have you ever had to run away from a herd of stampeding bulls? I know I have. Let us know in our fancy YouTube poll. Number 49. Another kind of cruel Spanish festival involves the small town of Maganesis de la Polvorosa, in which villagers would mark the fourth Sunday of January by hurling a goat from a church belfry, in commemoration of a legendary goat that fell from the tower but landed safely. The unlucky goat chosen for the ritual would be caught in a canvas sheet, but the practice was still regarded cruel enough to be banned in the early 2000s. Number 50. Every year in the Spanish province of Burgos, people celebrate El Calacho, a traditional holiday in which infants that have been born in the last 12 months are laid on mattresses in the street before men dressed as the devil leap over them to cleanse them of original sin. And if the costumes are anything to go by, the festival proves that Satan has terrible dress sense. Number 51. 
Spain's national anthem, March Royal, is one of only four national anthems in the world that is entirely lyricless. It's literally just music. Basically, it's like the interlude on a pretentious indie album that you always skip. Number 52. Before Spain decided to jump on the Eurozone bandwagon, its original monetary unit was the humble peseta. Not to be confused with peso, the Mexican currency that's still in use, or paella, which is a form of Spanish food. Number 53. Spain produces more virgin olive oil than the rest of the planet combined. However, most of it is sold as Italian virgin olive oil because the truth doesn't matter and everything is meaningless. Number 54. In 1930, Spain produced the very first postage stamp to depict a nude woman. In commemoration of the famous oil painting, La Maja Desnuda, by the Spanish artist Francisco Goya. The titillating stamps caused outrage in Spain, and the prudish United States government even returned any mail bearing them. Number 55. There are no laws in Spain that explicitly ban <clears throat> ladies of the night, making the practice vaguely legal within certain parameters. As such, there is a school in Spain that offers professional courses in this, um, art form, which provide instructions such as how to do it safely, the law surrounding it, and even L-O-V-E making skills. Number 56. Hilariously, in 2010, said ladies of the night working in the Spanish city of Lleida were ordered to wear fluorescent high-vis vests while peddling their wares on roadsides. This wasn't to make it more obvious for paying customers and avoid certain awkward situations, but to be in accordance with existing health and safety laws. Number 57. In 1864, Spain started a war with Peru and Chile by seizing the Chincha Islands, owing to its abundance of guano, which is the accumulated excrement of seabirds and bats. Tasty. Owing to its chemical composition, guano can be used as a highly effective fertilizer and is even an ingredient in gunpowder. So, yeah, what I'm saying is, Spain literally started a war over poo. Number 58. Spain's capital is Madrid, and with a population of 6.5 million, it's also Spain's largest city. Other major urban areas include Barcelona, Seville, Valencia, Malaga, and Bilbao. Number 59. The name Madrid comes from the Arabic Magharit, which means place of many streams. No beaches though, which is a shame. Number 60. The official mascot of the city of Madrid is the bear, which comes from the town's famous emblem which depicts a bear reaching up for the fruit of a strawberry tree, which I've since learnt does not produce actual strawberries and is therefore a tree of lies. Number 60. Oh no. Number 61. At roughly 667 metres above sea level, Madrid is the highest capital city in Europe. It shares this title with Amsterdam, which is also the highest capital city in Europe. Number 62. The world-famous Sagrada Familia is a large unfinished Catholic church in Barcelona, designed by the Catalan architect Antony Gaudi. The enormous building is expected to be completed by 2026 meaning it will have been under construction for over 130 years, longer than the Great Pyramid of Giza. Number 63. Since 1961, a 92-year-old former monk named Justo Gallego Martinez, also known as Don Justo, has been building an unauthorized cathedral in Spain's capital city of Madrid. The building, which is apparently called Nuestra Senora de Pila, has no planning permission nor approval from any church authority. He just wanted to build the cathedral, you guys, and you know, he's doing it. He's living his best life. Nintendo 64. Madrid is also home to the Puerto del Sol Plaza, one of the busiest and most well-known parts of the city. Its name translates to Gate of the Sun, and is the physical centre of the country from where all the nation's network of radial roads are measured. Number 65. Though the residents of Madrid are officially known as Madrileños, they are also often called gatos, which means cats. This is apparently because they sleep all day and are out all night, and not because they kill birds to display dominance. Number 66. In Spain, Corona beer is branded as Coronita, meaning Little Corona. This is because the renowned winemaker Bodegas Torres has owned the trademark for Coronas since 1907. Number 67. A study conducted in 2006 found that almost 94% of all Euro banknotes in circulation in Spain carry trace amounts of cocaine, meaning if you were able to take all of it off every single Spanish banknote, you'd have a boatload of it. Number 68. In 2014, Spain had a higher rate of unemployment than the United States during the Great Depression. The USA suffered an unemployment rate of 25%, compared to the rate of Spain, which was 27.2. Number 69. Desposito. Since the beginning of the recession in 2008 to 2013, female entrepreneurs set up 40% of all new businesses in Spain, totaling roughly 800,000 businesses. You go, gals or senoritas. Number 70. Most people will remember the not at all terrifying tradition of the Tooth Fairy, who retrieves lost teeth that have been found under pillows and replaces them with money. 
This not creepy at all practice also exists in Spain, but with one major difference. It isn't a fairy who exchanges teeth for money, but a small mouse adorably named Ratoncito Perez. Number 71. Awesomely, Spain was also one of the first countries in the world to legalise gay marriage, which they did all the way back in 2005. They were only the third country to do so, being beaten to the punch by the Netherlands in 2001 and Belgium in 2003. Number 72. Spain is also responsible for gifting onto the world the humble mop and wheeled bucket, which was invented in 1956 by Manuel Halon Corominas. Corominas also invented the disposable syringe, which thinking about it now makes me wonder why I led with the mop and bucket. Number 73. Spain is one of a handful of countries, including France, the Netherlands, Germany and Austria, where beer is sold at McDonald's. Here we just drink coke and all our pubs close at 11.30pm because we're children who can't be trusted. Number 74. In the year 2000, Spain's Paralympic basketball team were ordered to return the gold medals they had won that year in Sydney's Paralympic Games after it emerged that nearly all of their players had no disabilities. I mean, there's no real joke here, they cheated against disabled people. I suppose they're the joke in a way. Number 75. In 2002, British forces accidentally invaded Spain. Roughly 20 Royal Marines disembarked there instead of in Gibraltar. They spent about five minutes in Spain before realising their mistake and all withdrew. Number 76. The reason why the flu pandemic of 1918 is referred to as the Spanish flu is because Spain, as a non-belligerent in the First World War, was basically the only country that didn't fake and minimise the data to maintain wartime morale, unlike Germany, Britain, France and the US. This created the false impression that the outbreak was especially severe in Spain, spawning the nickname Spanish Flu. Number 77. Spain is the only country in the world to erect, t sorry, sorry, a monument to the liver. Yes, you heard that correctly, the internal organ known as the liver. The monument was inaugurated in the city of Ferrol in 1987 by the city coroner, who called the liver the silent and unselfish organ. Number 78. When the 16th century new cathedral in Salamanca was renovated during the early 1990s, various carvings with modern designs were added, including but not limited to an astronaut and a gargoyle eating ice cream. It's actually a tradition for artisans to include contemporary imagery, so the inclusion of these figures was perfectly reasonable. Number 79. In 2012, the Homeowner Association of the village of Sodeto won the Spanish Christmas Lottery, which had a jackpot of roughly $950 million at the time, working out at roughly $130,000 per person. Literally everyone in the village had bought at least one ticket, except for exactly one man, who I assume is no longer with us. Number 80. The town of Correa de Rio in southern Spain is home to roughly 700 people of the surname Hapon. These individuals are descended from various members of the delegation of the Japanese officials led by a 17th century samurai called Hasakura Tsunanaga, the first Japanese official envoy to Spain. Number 81. Certain regions of Spain and New Zealand are land antipodes, meaning they are directly opposite each other on each side of the planet. This allowed some intrepid foodies to create the world's first earth sandwich in 2006 by simultaneously placing two sides of a baguette on the ground in both Spain and New Zealand. Yummy, although the only person that can eat that sandwich is Galactus, am I right guys? Haha, <laughs> nerd jokes. Number 82. There is a restaurant located on the Spanish island of Lanzarote that cooks its food using geothermal heat from an active volcano. This eatery is appropriately named Restaurant El Diablo, which translates roughly to Restaurant of the Devil. Number 83. There are mines in southwestern Spain that, except for some periods of interruption, have been in operation for much of the past 5,000 years. Starting with the ancient Iberians and Tartitians, so many different groups have mined in the area that the minerals have leached into an Andalusian river, turning it bright red, earning it the nickname Rio Tinto, meaning Red River. Number 84. In 2015, the council of a tiny town in northwest Spain, called Trigoros del Valle, unanimously decided to officially recognise cats and dogs as equal citizens. The town adopted an animal bill of rights, comprised of 13 articles including statements like all residents are born equal and have the same right to existence, as well as a resident, whether human or non-human, is entitled to respect. Number 85. There is an island in the Bidasoa River called Isla de los Fezanes, or Pheasant Island, that's jointly owned by France and Spain. Located in the Basque Country, the two nations decided to alternate ownership of the island every six months, meaning that it's sometimes in Spain and sometimes in France, depending on the time of year. Number 86. Under the laws of the US state of Nevada, the Statue of Liberty in New York is legally married to the Christopher Columbus Monument in Barcelona, Spain. This stupid idea that is totally bad and stupid was carried out as part of Project Honeymoon, a multi-site international art project created by Spanish artist Antony Miralda. Number 87. In 2015, archaeologists working in the cave of the Asturias region of northern Spain uncovered the remains of what appears to be a family group of 12 Neanderthals who were cannibalised by the humans about 42,000 years ago. 
Experts say that the markings found on the bones showed unmistakable signs of cannibal activity. That's a damning indictment on paella right there. Number 88. In 2011, Castellon Airport in eastern Spain was officially open, despite having no airlines signed up to use the airport and no government approval to operate. Despite being built at a cost of 150 million euros, the first scheduled commercial flight landed at the facility in 2015. And as such, the airport has since become a symbol of wasteful spending that led to Spain's current economic woes. Number 89. Only 35 years ago, the small city of Almeria on the southern coast of Spain was almost entirely dry desert. However, the city rebuilt its economy around vegetable production and is now home to the largest collection of greenhouses on Earth, covering 26,000 hectares and producing more than half of all Europe's fruit and vegetables. Number 90. There's a street in the central Spanish city of Leganese named ACDC in honour of the iconic Australian rock band of the same name. The band even visited the street in 2000 when it was inaugurated. However, the city was eventually forced to paint the sign because the street's name plaque would constantly get stolen by fans. Number 91. The ancient Tower of Hercules, located at the entrance of La Coruña Harbour in northwestern Spain, is the oldest Roman lighthouse in use today, having been built in the late 1st century. That's right, it's the best part of 2,000 years old. Number 92. The Porcipina and Cornalbo dams, which in case you were wondering can be found in the eastern Spanish region of Extremadura, were both built by the Romans at some time in the 1st or 2nd century, making them roughly 1,900 years old. Amazingly, they're still in use today, which is kind of worrying for a dam, right? That's gonna break soon and I've seen Evan Almighty. Number 93. In 1971, several years after the death of his wife, Ava Perón, the exiled Argentinian president, Juan Perón, had her body exhumed and flown to Spain, where he and his new wife kept the corpse in an open casket on a platform in their dining room. Well, I'm sure it was a conversation starter. <laughs> and ender. Number 94. There's a zip line that starts in the southern Spanish village of San Luca de Guadiana, crosses the Guadiana River, and ends in the town of Alcutim in Portugal. The journey is 720 meters long and lasts for about a minute and you get to bypass customs. Number 95. There's a 47-story skyscraper in Spain that has no lifts, is what an incorrect person would say. The bizarre rumour about the Intembo skyscraper, which is located in Benidorm of all places, can be found everywhere online, but the building actually has six lifts, or elevators. What's interesting about the building is that it features two enormous columns holding up a massive upside-down cone. It's hard to make a building look evil, but <laughs> they did it. Number 96. The Spanish region of Catalonia, which totally wants to be not a Spanish region but Spain won't let them, is home to a particularly strange Christmas tradition involving a character called Tio de Nadal, a smiley faced wooden log who's beaten with sticks until he poos out Christmas treats. <laughs> cool. Good to know. Number 97. A few days later at New Year, Spaniards celebrate the New Year by gathering with their family and eating one grape for each bell strike of the tower clock in Puerta del Sol in Madrid. Number 98. Interestingly, the Eiffel Tower, now a symbol of France for known the world over, was originally intended to be built in Barcelona. However, the project was rejected and moved to Paris instead. Number 99. Spain's Balearic Islands contain the island of Ibiza. Oh, we're going to Ibiza! One of Europe's most well-known party destinations. The island is notorious for raucous lads holidays and Hindus, a reputation that the island has attempted to diminish in favour of family-oriented tourism several times by closing down clubs. However, it's not really working. Number 100! Britain's popular celebrity news magazine Hello was first launched in 1998 to much rejoicing. But did you know that Hello is the British local edition of Hola, a Spanish magazine first published in 1944? No? You pitiful imbecile. Well, there you go. Number 101! Spain also created Chupa Chups, the popular brand of lollipops. The name comes from the Spanish word chupa, meaning to suck, which I'm sure many mean people in the comments will say this video did. But I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you did. Also let me know in the comments what you want to see next, because in the meantime, I've got these two videos on screen now, and you're really going to love at least one of them. Please click and remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.